It really is a matter of perspective. For an algebra student, solving an equation with two square roots is messy. It takes a lot of algebra. There's a lot of places you can mess up and it requires extra practice. If you are taking pre-calculus, maybe you're finding the inverse of a three by three matrix. That's one that can be really painful. I remember staying up all night trying to get better at it when I was a student and it felt like I could never get better. But over time, I was able to get better. If you're in calculus too, maybe you're doing some integrals that seem messy. Trig substitution is a good example. But in this video, we're gonna take it to the next level. We're gonna do something even messier than all of these examples. We're gonna look at a technique that is used to solve specific types of differential equations. And we're gonna use that technique to solve a fairly simple problem, but it's messy. Okay, let's get to it right away. Let's do some mathematics. So this solution technique is used to solve certain types of differential equations, differential equations that are linear and have constant coefficients. But on the right-hand side of the differential equation, we don't have e to the x, we don't have cosine x, we don't have sine x, or any linear combination of those. Instead, we have other functions, maybe a natural log function, maybe a secant function, maybe a tangent function. In our example, we're gonna have the square of a secant function. In order to understand the solution, which I'm about to show you, you do need to know some calculus. So calculus is required. Um, if you know some calculus, ideally, you should be able to follow along with what I'm doing. And yeah, I'll just show you how to do it. We're almost there. So this is the differential equation we're going to solve. And we're gonna use a technique that has a name. It's known as variation of parameters. And this is really messy. It's a really messy problem. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go through the process and give you the formulas as we go through the problem. I'm not necessarily um, gonna give all the steps first and, and break it all down. So let's just jump into it and do it like a normal person would do it. So solution. So the first thing you do is you solve the associated homogeneous equation. Basically you pretend it's equal to zero. So you pretend it's equal to zero, so you basically solve this equation. To solve this, you find what's called the characteristic equation or auxiliary equation. So you write down an equation based off the derivatives. So this is the second derivative, so it's m squared, plus nine. Y is the zeroth derivative, so it's m to the zero, which is one, so you don't write it. And you set it equal to zero. This is super easy to solve. You subtract nine from both sides. So here we get negative nine. Take the square root and you get m equals plus or minus 3i. Now this is a complex number so it's really written as 0 plus or minus 3i. And now we want to identify the real and imaginary parts. So think of this as alpha plus or minus beta i. From this we can see that alpha is 0 and beta is 3. And the formula you use now for the answer which is called the complementary function. So the answer to this is called the complementary function, y sub c. It's c sub one, e to the alpha x, cosine beta x, plus c sub two, e to the alpha x, sine beta x. Alpha is zero, so these e to the zeros, they're gonna be one, so you don't have to worry about it, right? So y sub c is gonna be c sub one, cosine three x plus c sub two sine three x. This is called the complementary function. Technically we're halfway done, but we still have a long way to go. The final answer is going to be y equals y sub c plus y sub p, or y sub c is called the complementary function. It's basically the solution to the associated homogeneous equation, which we just solved y sub p is called the particular solution. Now we're gonna work on that. To find the particular solution, we need to compute some matrices, some determinants rather. We need to compute w, which is y sub one, y sub one prime, y sub two, y sub two prime. I'll show you what those are in a minute. We have to compute w sub one, which is zero f of x, y sub two, y sub two prime. And we have to compute w sub two, 
which is y sub 1, y sub 1 prime, 0 f of x. You might say, what are all these things? Well, these are just some of the formulas we're going to be using. There's actually more formulas. So y sub 1 and y sub 2 are basically whatever we decide we want to be. We can just pick either of these to be y sub 1. Since this one comes first, we're going to call this one y sub 1, and we'll call this one y sub 2. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You'll still get the same answer. So I'm going to write it down. y sub 1 is cosine 3x. y sub 2 is sine 3x. You can see from our formulas that we need the derivatives. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but there's an inside function here, 3x. So we have to use the chain rule and take the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of 3x is 3. So y, one, y sub 1 prime is going to be negative sine 3x times the derivative of the inside, which is 3. So it'll just be negative 3 sine 3x. Same thing here, except the derivative of sine is cosine, so we'll get 3 cosine 3x. So you have to know some pretty solid calculus to understand this. And so now, uh, what we do is we compute w, right, which is the determinant. So it'll be cosine 3x, negative 3 sine 3x, sine 3x, 3 cosine 3x. And this is a 2 by 2 determinant, so it's really easy to do it. You just like, multiply these two, so it'll be 3 cosine squared, 3x. Then you subtract and multiply these two, but there's already a minus here, so it'll become a plus. This is from the formula, but there's a minus here, so it'll turn into a plus. 3 sine squared 3x. So w, pull out the 3, so you get 3 cosine squared 3x plus sine squared 3x. This pencil is really good. I'm going to sharpen it, though. And this is a formula that uh, most people know. It's 1, right? This is equal to 1. It's an identity, rather. So this is going to be equal to 3 times 1, which is 3. So w is equal to 3. That's a huge accomplishment, so I'm going to put it in a box. What is f of x? This is key. f of x is right here. And this is important because it has to be written in this form. Like, if you have a number here, like if I had a 3 here, I'd have to divide by the 3. This coefficient has to be a 1, okay? Um, if it's not a 1, you've got to make it a 1 by dividing. And notice that's going to alter your f of x, so super key. So we've already got our f of x here. So let's do w1. So for w sub 1, it's going to be 0, and then our f of x we said was 9 secant squared of 3x. And then y sub 2 was sine 3x. I love the sound the pencil makes. And then y sub 2 prime. Forgot to put my prime there. That's pretty sloppy. You probably caught that if you're watching this video. Um, this is going to be 3 cosine 3x. Multiply, you get 0. Then subtract and multiply. So it'll be 9 sine 3x secant squared 3x. So w sub 1. Let's write it like this. Negative 9 sine 3x over cosine squared 3x. Let's put it in a box. It's an accomplishment. W sub 2, same thing, except this time we keep y sub 1 and y sub 1 prime. Probably It should remind you of Kramer's rule, right? For w1, you replace the first column with 0 f of x. For w2, you replace the second column with 0 f of x of w, right? So w1, cross out that first column, replace it with 0 f of x. w2, cross out that first column, replace it with 0 f of x. So really easy to memorize the formulas. There's other ways of doing this, by the way. There's other formulas people use. Other books use different formulas. I like this way much better. Uh, right, so w sub 2, uh, it's going to be these guys here. That's the first column. So it'll be cosine 3x, negative 3 sine 3x, and then 0 f of x. So 0, 9 secant squared, 3x. That's equal to multiply, subtract, multiply. So cosine times that will be 9 cosine 3x secant squared 3x minus 0, because this is 0. So w sub 2 is equal to um, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared, so this is 9 cosine 3x 1 over cosine squared 3x. We lose a copy of cosine, so it'll be 9 times 1 over cosine 3x. So it'll be 9 secant 3x. And that's w2. 
right? This is W2. Okay, now we need to compute the U's. You might say the U's, yeah, the U's. So the U's are gonna help us find YP. So basically Y sub P is gonna be U1, Y1 plus U2, Y2. I told you it was messy. <laughs> so U sub one is the integral of W1 over W dx. And then U sub two is the integral of W2 over W dx. So as long as you can integrate these, you can solve the problem, right? That, that's really like the, the roadblock to these problems. Like if you can't integrate these, then you're just gonna get a really weird answer with like some integral in it, okay? Because remember, the final answer is y equals yc plus yp. So there are cases when you can't integrate these because like it's, it's impossible, right? So you'll have some crazy answer. Uh, this problem is rigged, it's from a math book, so we're gonna be able to integrate everything no, with no issues. So w1, was negative nine sine three x over cosine squared three x. And w is uh, three. So for u one, it's gonna be the integral of, we're basically dividing this by three, so that negative nine is gonna become a negative three. Negative three sine three x over cosine squared three x dx. Now we let u be cosine three x. So then du, well, it's gonna be negative three sine three x dx, chain rule. And look how, look how set up this is, just rigged, look at that, wow. Wow, so this is gonna be u1 equals the integral of, this, this whole thing is du, so it's du over u squared. We wanna write it as something to a power so we can use the power rule. So bring it upstairs, it becomes u to the negative two du. Now you apply the power rule, so you add one to the exponent and divide. So it's u to the negative one over negative one. Don't worry about the plus c. It's negative one over u, negative one over cosine three x. So u sub one is negative secant of three x. That's a huge accomplishment. Let's do u sub two, which is w two over W, okay, so W2 um, was nine secant three X. That was W2. So we're dividing it by W, which is three. So it's this over this, so, um, over this. Let me write the formula one more time so you see it. So nine secant three X divided by three is just gonna give us three secant three X dx, make a substitution, let u be 3x, du is 3dx, look at that, all that's du, 3dx is just du, super simple, u sub 2 is secant u du, this is an integral that we have memorized, it's the natural log of the secant of u, plus the tangent of u, don't worry about the constant, so it's the natural log of secant of 3x, plus tangent of 3x. And I'm going pretty fast, right? Like, imagine if I was going slower, it probably would take like 20 to 30 minutes. In a classroom setting, this takes like 20 to 30 minutes. Once you can do one of these on your own though, like if after you watch this video, you redo this problem on your own, you know variation of parameters. You've learned um, a differential equations technique, right? So that's kind of cool. So now we just need to write the answer down, right? So yp is u1, y1 plus u2, y2. So u1 um, is right here, negative secant 3x. y1 was given before, we, we chose it. Uh, we chose it as cosine 3x and y2 is sine 3x. We chose those, remember, when we found the complementary function, which is the solution to the associated homogeneous equation that we solved at the beginning to find y sub c. So y sub one is cosine 3x. And then u2 is this mess here, times y2, which is sine 3x. I'm gonna write the sine 3x first, plus sine 3x, natural log absolute value, secant 3x, plus tangent 3x. Something magical happens, look, boom, it's a one. So y sub p is equal to negative one plus sine 3x, natural log absolute value, secant 3x, plus tangent 3x. Okay, really cool. So the final answer is y equals y sub c plus y sub p 
So y equals, finally, c1 cosine 3x plus c sub 2 sine 3x minus 1 plus the sine of 3x. I'm running out of room. No! Natural log, absolute value, secant 3x plus tangent 3x. I got too excited and wrote too big. Ah, well, that's the answer. I squeezed it in. There it is. Let me zoom in so you can see it. There's the final answer. So messy mathematics, right? I just wanted to show you a messy problem from differential equations. You might say, does it get messier? Yes, yes it does. Um, the series solutions are even messier. Maybe I'll do uh, a video with one of those. Those I cannot do in the amount of time that I did this one. Like if I do a, a serious series problem, it's gonna take, uh, it's gonna take much longer to do uh, than something like this, so. But yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Hopefully uh, you've learned some mathematics. Until next time, good luck, keep doing math. Oh, 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 I should just mention this. Uh, if you want to learn math, before I forget, I do have courses on my website, mathsorcerer.com. It's not a very good website. It's really badly designed and stuff, but it's legit <laughs> and it's mine. So if you go there um, and you click on the links, it'll take you to the Udemy website because my courses are actually for sale on Udemy. But if you use my links, um, two things will happen. One, um, Udemy won't take a huge chunk of what you pay. Otherwise, Udemy takes, like, I forgot what it is, but it's quite a bit. And two, um, the, the prices should be low because I lowered the prices on all my courses to the bare minimum. And Udemy always has, like, weird sales. So I'm pretty sure you're going to get the best price if you go through my website. Uh, as far as what courses I have, I have a college algebra course. Okay, um, that one's pretty good. It's got assignments. I've got two differential equations courses. So DE, I've got two courses. They're very similar. One has uh, classroom lectures with assignments and a final exam with a final exam review. And the other one has short little tiny videos with assignments. So it's roughly the same content, but you'll get different videos and similar assignments, but they're not, they're, they are different. I also have a calculus one course. I have two of those. Same thing, some lectures and versus um, mini assignments. Calculus three, I believe I have two of those, I think. Uh, and I have one calculus two course. And then I have some other courses as well, like some courses on integration and stuff like that. So a bunch of courses, um, some on proof writing, et cetera. So mathsorcerer.com in case you're interested. And you don't, I don't think you have to wait for a sale. If you use the links, I'm pretty sure you always get the lowest price. Also, I uh, just wanna say thank you uh, to my Patreon supporters, I really appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you uh, to my members here on the channel. Um, I really appreciate all your support so I can continue to make math videos. Hopefully this has been helpful, and hopefully you understood even some of this. I just want to make a video on some messy, messy mathematics, yeah, messy math. Until next time, good luck, take care, keep doing math.